And here it All goes. Right. Okay, we're live. Okay, well, here we go. This is um, Unguarded Moments. Yeah, my name is Eric, and that is... I'm, apparently, I'm Bill. That's Bill. And we are doing our first cut for what we would like to consider a fun, interesting show on local Detroit music. Um, we prefer talking about bands that are up and coming. Yeah. The, the, you know, we have a mission statement, and... We were talking about this earlier, you and Eric, Eric and I, um, you and I, there you are right in front of me, and uh, what we were talking about is really through some kind of media, YouTube, Facebook, what have you, um, doing a, a regular podcast, bringing music lovers to Detroit and their stories of music, concerts, uniting them through discussions, and the memories that inspired multiple generations. Now that's a lot of words. Amen. That is a lot of words. But really what it is, is Eric and I love music. Now, Eric, when did you and I meet? Yeah, Bill and I met, uh, well, it's been probably every bit of 10 years ago. Easy. And uh, yeah, we worked together. We met through work. Uh, Bill was, working as an underwriter and I was working as a new LO, uh, loan officer at uh, for Chase. And, and the fun part about this was, is I was the only underwriter in the building, and I had my own little office, and I had my headphones on, and I was always listening to like Depeche Mode, or Eric Bunny Bunnyman, or some some kind of '80s tunes. And you came up, and you're like, "Dude, what are you listening to?" Yeah, when you see a fellow uh, music entrepreneur or aficionado uh, with a stack of CDs at the time, you're kind of curious about what he listens to, and that's kind of where it all got started. You know, what's this guy listen to? Right. And it was one of those things where we both decided that we, uh, heck yeah, we love music. I was hoping I wouldn't see any Madonna CDs or maybe, you know, uh, Johnny Cash, even though I like both of them. But I was kind of hoping those two weren't as stacked Well, I have some Johnny Cash. So do I. Yeah. I love Madonna too, but and, you know, we I, share the same birthday. Some Madonna stuff too. Yeah, we share the same but birthday. But you, you, you got to enjoy it. And, yeah. And the whole part of it is, is you know, again, we love music, and we want to share our love for music with as many people who want to hear it. And some of the things we want to talk about, obviously, we're going to do some interviews with local bands. Um, I have a connection with a lot of local bands that play in Hamtramck and downtown uh, Detroit and all that stuff. And we're going, to, we're going to do that stuff. But most of what we want to do is discussions between us about concerts, why they were so formative, uh, what we loved about the concerts that we went and saw. I mean, I remember we went what uh, last year to go see Echo and the Bunnymen together, and that was yes. not the first concert we've seen together. No, no, we Bill and I have seen many, and I, this all got started with uh, we went and saw the church, and the church started their North American tour here, right here in Ferndale, Michigan. And I had gotten tickets. The first person I obviously called was Bill, and I said, oh, yeah. "I think I think we should go to this concert, Bill. Or I think you should go with me." And and Bill was. Uh, Obviously, uh, ex ex we want to accept the ticket. Whatever Heck yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's the church. I mean, come on. So the church had the Starfish album, which was uh, iconic back in the late 80s, early 90s, and it really defined uh, what music was like back then. Right. And uh, it was kind of your indie rock, you know. You're, we'll be a, get a little bit of indie rock today, but that was still your underground music that you never really heard too much on the radio, but uh, the quality and the, and the craftsmanship of the music was incredible. Well, I remember what was it, one hundred two point seven, uh, WLDS when we were. Uh, I think you might be right. Ninety nine point five, which was something, and that was before they went country and before they went pop. And back in the eighties, there was a bunch of good Detroit radio stations. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, of course, you got your CSX and your LOZ and all these great radio. The LOZ stations. is back. Yeah, you know, and you know, even DET. With uh, what's her name? Karen? Andalisi. Andalisi, yeah. Songs from Missing Channel, if I'm not mistaken. Oh I right? my god, just great stuff. And it was just this. We've Eric and I have this cumulative knowledge of music that between us we've listened to all these different people talk about the stuff that we love. I mean, Eric, I'm going to ask you. I'm going to put you on the spot now. All right, shoot. What songs playing in your head? Well, I've been listening to a lot of Johnny Marr lately, and right. it's actually a specific song called Easy Money. There you don't go. ask me why, but it's catchy, and uh, uh, if you guys don't know Johnny Marr, he goes back to the Smiths, and uh, yep. he's played with some other bands you guys might be familiar with, Electronic but uh, 
Yeah, he's uh, a very talented guy oh, and yeah. uh, very underrated. Um, but, I mean, it, at any given moment, I got a song planned in my head as well. Yeah, and what's your, uh, what's your song playing in today? Well, right now I have Uncertain Smile playing. Uncertain Smile. The, the. The, the. I was just going to say the, the. Yeah, exactly. Another under, underrated band that uh, right. doesn't get enough notoriety. And, and here's the fun part is, is you know, we want to have the discussions that are just fun stuff about music and about the music we love. And if you enjoy this, please feel free to listen as many times as you want. We're going to do a number of shows every month and just just have fun talking about the music we love. But some of the fun things that we're going to do also is the, you know, if you were on a desert island, what five albums would you have? That's a tough question, it Bill. It is a tough question. It's a tough question. But it's something to think about. You yeah. Know? And it's something you can bring up at, like, Thanksgiving dinner with your cousins and stuff, and, you know, the ones that are roughly your age, and go, hey, you know, so-and-so, what, what, if you were stuck on a there's not, what, what five albums would you have? Sure. That you could listen to all the time. And then, you know, you go through it, and then you talk about it, and you go, oh, yeah, I remember that one, and oh, I wouldn't have thought of that one. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You know, and then it's like, well, Steely Dan, really? Yeah. You know, do you know where the name Steely Dan comes from? Tell me. <laughs> I'm asking you. I have no idea. You have no idea? I'm sure there's some. <laughs> but see, let's, let's just say the name Steely Dan comes from uh, something a woman might buy. Oh, God. Man. Don't <laughs> That's all so I'll say. So we're going to jump to a whole nother Yeah, let's, let's, we'll scratch that for right now. Right. But getting back to the church, um, and this is kind of... When Bill and I went and saw the church um, not too long ago, I, I'm drawing a blank. Was it probably, April? Yeah, it was, was it less, April, than, less than a year ago. Yeah. So it was um, 2019. Yep. Uh, yeah. Like I said, it was the first leg of the North American tour. It was the first show. Mm -hmm. Can I say it was the best show i ever seen? No. But did it have a lot of influence on me? Did it bring back a lot of memories? Did it, uh, did it make me think? It sure did. So Bill and I are sitting there and we're kind of sitting back uh, close to the bar and closest to the bathroom. You guys yeah. can kind of figure out the reason why we did that. But it was strategic. Yeah. And I leaned over to Bill and I said, you know, Bill, and I said, what do you think everybody's thinking right now? And it was kind of a generic question, but I was kind of picking Bill's brain because we kind of think on similar lines. Yeah, but Bill always has an interesting uh, yeah. perspective I, 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 on stuff. I'm weird. And uh, you asked me that question. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? And it was more more to the point of, you know, what's going, I mean, are they going back to, you know, the 80s when they first heard the album? Are they going back to the time they were driving to Kalamazoo to drop somebody off or something? Yeah, but and, if I said that at a Molly Crew concert, it probably wouldn't have meant the same. Right. You knew where I was getting, where I was going. Right. I was like, and, it, and my thought was, is, you know, yeah, well, I would imagine that people are, and there you go. Yeah. Let's do that right in front of the mic there, you little cheese dick. Yeah, that'll get us demonetized. But uh, <laughs> um, I was lighting a candle. Yeah, right. And so the whole thought was, is, you know, what's going through people's minds? Is it, are they getting set back to the time they first heard the album? With it's the time they first heard it on the radio? What were the, you know? And every person who heard that album, Starfish, has a story about the time that they first heard it. For sure. And and then we just started going with this whole thing of like, oh man, wouldn't it be great to just tell these stories and just talk to people about stuff? And the thing is, it might not only be Starfish for other people, but obviously it might be, maybe it is a Motley Crue album, maybe it is right. a Camper Van Beethoven or a Joy Division or something. But music brings you back to a place where um, memories happen, memories got started, and, and things that never, things that get ingrained in your mind because of a a certain occasion or something that happened in your life Some that event. was negative or positive, yeah. but uh, you can kind of go back and reminisce about that. And, and you know, just bring back of... memories. And then it's like, oh, wow, I remember when I first saw this band. You know, I mean, we were talking earlier today, and I was telling you about uh, when I first saw In Excess when they opened up for the Go-Go's in 1984. And, I mean, that was we had lawn seats at Pine Knob. That's a Detroit thing. So you're like 16, 17? Oh, uh, you don't have to answer that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was just bar now. barely driving. Yeah, but I mean, because I don't think I was driving yet, but I got no, there. No, we I got had, there for the in excess kick tour. It was me and uh, two girls and some dude, and we just had the funnest time ever. And it was 
one of those just great shows, and quite frankly, in excess, opened up for the Go Go's. Yeah, that was the Pine Up show, wasn't it? Yeah, it was the Pine Up yeah, show. Yeah, that was say in excess on their swing tour, and yeah. the Go Go's were doing their. Um, uh, I don't remember what tour it was. Yeah, I don't have to was, look that you up. Know, um, the whole beach thing. Yeah, and, and, and I can know. see. I can see the album. I just and, don't remember and, the name and, of and it. It's killing me that I can't think of it right now because I'm usually good. With Bear with stuff. us. It's old age. Yeah, no, well, I haven't been as far. But um, watching in excess, I'm like, these guys are great. And I had already purchased Swing on cassette, and that tells you how old I am too. Yeah, you um, you probably still have the concert T-shirt, don't you? I have the concert T-shirt. I also still have that cassette. Does it still fit? Swing? No, hell no. Fit. Well, it does, just not the same way. <laughs> well, I mean, I can squeeze it over my lard. It's like, it's like a fruit roll-up. <laughs> if that. <laughs> Don't even start. Um, but, I mean, the show was great. In Excess was phenomenal. The Go-Go's were good. But I'm like, when? how often does the opening band do way better than the actual sure the, the, the headliner? And this was just one of those things where I'm like, wow, I'm just going to be into shows the rest of my life. Yeah, that's the way I was too. You know, and I remember, I mean, I could tell you the story. Well, uh, we I went think saw, the name of the album was Vacation. Vacation, of yeah. course. Yes, yeah. thank you very much. The beach. Um, thank you. That's where the video was when they were all skiing. Vacation. Yeah. Delete that part. Yeah, now that song is going to be in my head all night. Thanks a lot. I appreciate <laughs> it. But you and I went and saw Echo and the Bunnymen. Um, what less than a year ago? Yeah, it was last um, last fall with uh, with Violent Femmes. Violent Femmes opened up for yeah, them. and but it's a different show when you're 50 than it is when you're 16. Yeah, oh, I remember seeing them when I was about um, God, I was probably I think I was still in high school, but that was the year of uh, Mohawks and mm -hmm. you know a lot of uh, call it goth. Everybody was oh, yeah. black and you know. But uh, it was an interesting show. A little bit different this time. But the funny thing was is that most of the people there were in their 50s, 40s and 50s. Well, and I know? had this particular T-shirt on that night. Oh, yeah. You guys can't see it. But, yeah, it's uh, it's my 1988 Echo uh, and the Bunnymen, Echo and the Bunnymen T-shirt from the, whichever, I, I think it was, uh, I can't remember which tour it was either. You know, in one of these days, I'm going to actually figure this stuff out and actually be able yeah. to tell you guys these things. We'll but, do our homework a little bit and be a little bit more informative. Right. And, you know, here we're just rambling. But the, the whole point of our show is to discuss with people and, and get comments and, and have fun talking about the concerts we've been to, why they were different, why they were unique, why they were awesome, what songs played in your head, and obfuscated band names. Goofy yep. stuff. We're gonna. We're just gonna have a lot of fun. That's Bill's humor, not mine. Yeah, it takes I'm me days to figure out uh, his obfuscated uh, band names. Yeah. But um, yeah, part of the purpose of this podcast is dig a little bit deeper and uh, why we listen to music and why we have such favorites. And we were talking a little bit earlier today before we got started on this podcast. Our initial uh, podcast is, uh, you know, why do why do why do we listen to a song? Why is a song so? So um, interesting to us when we first hear it, but then maybe after two weeks, three weeks, after the 20th, 30th time, it kind of loses its luster. And what we don't that? really know. We don't know what happens yeah. in the brain to, to change that, even though we appreciate the song, we can relate. But um, for me, I can listen to uh, old REM, uh, like Document and Murmur and oh, Life's Rich Pageant. It never gets yeah. old. Um, and maybe it's because I don't listen to it all the time, but. Uh, you go to a, a band like the Black Keys, which is a phenomenal band. I took Bill to go see the Black Keys. I didn't really take them, but we both went together. That was a great tickets. show, by the way. It was a phenomenal show. A small venue, Fillmore, Detroit. Um, and it was incredible. Would I see them again? No, because I don't think they played the same way they, they did back then. That was about here's the fun five, part six years about ago. Show. And you remember this because I, I pulled you to the side. I mean, we were it was standing room only. Yeah. And we, it was we kept packed, squeezing right our way closer to the front and everything. And at one point, I just leaned over because I had never heard of the Black Keys. Yeah. And Eric, you were just... Either Bill was going or I was going solo, one of the two. Right. And you had said to me, um, you'll get a kick out of these guys. It's a good show. Yeah. And I'm like, 
fine, I trust you, let's go. And Bill's yeah. a Joy Division cure guy, and, and much like I'm a replacements Pixies guy, well, but like we both shows. appreciate good yeah. blues. I love a good, music. I love a good show, yeah. and I love good music. You know, give me something. Yeah, I love my rhythm and blues. Right, you know, right. Give me some Blues Brothers every day of the week. Yep. Give me Johnny Cash. Give me, you know, Howlin' Wolf. Sure. Whatever. I, I, just let me hear it. But I get to this show, and I'm listening three or four songs into it, and I lean over to you, and I said, there's only two guys on stage. Where's all that sound coming from? Yeah. Well, you actually said, Where, where's the rest of the band? I can't see them. Right. And I said, Bill, there's only two guys in this band. Right. And it was just, but, and... To be fair, the Black Keys are a great show. And, and yeah, they've been the best life. This is what two thousand six, probably five, yeah. something like that. It's been probably. It's been ten years. Yeah, least. I think so. But I mean, they were they were a great show, and I was like, "This is phenomenal. This is great stuff." And then I heard them on the radio. Back to your whole thing about you know you hear the song, and then you know ten or twelve times later you hear the song. It's not the same. Right. But then. You know, here I hear them on the radio, and I'm like, "Man, eh, they're all right." Yeah, it's um. There's something about that live show. Yeah. There's something about being there with all that that ambiance, that that culture. There's a reason of why other you're there, people you know? who are excited about that show. You know, there's there's something extra that jumps out at you. Sure. It's like you know, I'd love to go see Bruce Springsteen. I yeah. heard he never always puts on a great show. But yeah. again, the crowd feeds him. My buddy back in the 80s saw him for, what was the big tour he went on? Um, I'm drawing a blank, but he played for four hours. It's like, it's unheard of these days. Oh, yeah. Unheard of. And that was the that was the big album he had, Born to Run. It was the Probably Born to Run tour. Phenomenal album, by the way. Yeah. it's um, But Bill and I are sitting here doing this podcast. These are some of the things that, we want to bring in front of you and talk about, you know, why is it that a live show has so much influence on how we feel and how we think and the memories it brings back and, and um, you know. It's, well, and the uh, other thing about the live show that we want to make sure that we talk about is the live local shows because there is so much good talent in Detroit. We have seen, well, because you and I have gone the last three years together the Hamtramck Music Festival. Yes. And that has been a phenomenal show. And Everybody should go to that. Every time. And, you know, the, there's, I don't know, 300 bands in five nights. Yeah. With the, uh, oh. Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, and then Sunday afternoon, sometimes there's some extra and stuff. And there's also 20-some bars that yeah, it's, it's, partake in the And every festival. bar has four bands playing every night. And you can only see maybe 10 bands in a night. For a couple of songs. Right. And the last three times we've went, I've pre-listened to, because Hamtramck Music Festival has a great website, you can go ahead and check that out. Um, you can hear some of the bands, you can pre-listen to some of the bands and go, oh yeah, I definitely want to see them. Oh no, they're not my type, or whatever. Um, and you can go through all this stuff and pick out where you want to go and the last three three times we've gone. Yeah, last Bill's pretty years, much four for four for each year. Yeah. We've, we've concentrated on four bands each year that we've been. We've, we've At least the last three that I've been. I'll volunteer on Thursday and Friday night, and then Saturday night, because I volunteer, I get to go and hang out and see the bands on Saturday. And because of that, I've seen who's going to be the ones I want to go see. Yeah. And I decide, you know, like, all right. And so the Saturday nights we've gone... We've gone to see four, maybe five, usually three to five bands. And it's a lot of walking, a lot of fun, and just, you know, stumbling around. It rained like hell around. last year. It's a lot cold of cold shit. Year. It's a lot, of, a lot of good fun. But every time, I pick out something that's really good. Yeah. And there's so much talent here in Detroit. I think Bill wants to give a little shout-out to the Hand Grenades. I do want to give a shout-out to the Hand that's Grenades. That's a band to watch, band to listen to. Oh my gosh! If they don't play in front of a thousand people in the next they're up and coming eight days, and they're up and coming. At my watch that I don't even have on my yeah, wrist. Yeah, you can go ahead and fake it. I'm faking it. If you were looking at me, I'm looking at my watch. I'm looking at my wrist, and there's no watch there, but I'm looking. In the next twenty eight days, these guys need to be in front of thousands of people because thousands of people will go. 
holy crap, these guys are talented. Yeah, it's a band with a lot of talent. Yeah. A lot of talent. And, and, and they're just one of hundreds of bands in the greater Detroit area that just has great talent. Yeah, they and don't so, get enough recognition, you know? And that's part of the other reason of this, this podcast is we're going to talk to some of these bands and try and promote them and, and get people to come out and see them and go, yeah, well, you know, if you like this kind of music, then you need to come see these guys. Yeah. You don't like this kind of music, don't come. Right. But heck yeah, it's, you know, and it, there's some indie stuff, there's rhythm and blues, there's this, there's that, there's punk, there's there's rappers, there's all sorts of stuff that shows up at, at these shows. And But Detroit has such great talent. Well, more importantly, um, Bill, you could probably expand on this better than I can, but what's the whole purpose of uh, the Hamtramck Music Festival? Where do the proceeds go, and what is it to support? Well, that's a great question, Eric. Um, the Hamtramck Music Festival, uh, for the last, I, I can't remember, maybe in the last six to ten years since they've been doing it, um, the proceeds go to buy instruments for the local high school bands. So the high schools, as I understand it, and some of this might be conjecture, but as I understand it, the high school band directors put together a wish list and they give it to uh, our friends over at the Hamtramck Music Festival and say, these are the instruments we need. This is, this is the stuff that we, we got to have in order to have a good successful year this year. And the, they earn the money through the Hamtramck Music Festival and then turn around and go and purchase these items and then hand deliver them to the band directors and say, here's the stuff you wanted. There's no putzing around, losing money here, this, and there. It's, this is what we need, and this is what we can provide for you. Sure. It's it, it, it's a great way to do a good charity. Yeah, and with... Um... Hamtramck possibly losing uh, General Motors. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good reason to support and come down and support these groups and support the community down there and their youth programs and the and their music programs and whatnot. So, well, Detroit has a great legacy of music history. Look at Motown. Sure. I mean, there's so much in home of techno. It well, there there's all of that. There's probably an argument there, but you know you. You got, you got rap. You got this. You got that. All these. I'm not a rap fan, and I have no qualms about saying that. But you know what? To each his own. Sure. If you like rap, then fine. You like rap. Well, there's a great rap, sh bunch of rap shows in Detroit. But if you like rhythm and blues, you like uh, Motown type stuff. Detroit has that talent. We've got the history to have that talent. We sure and do. We just want to make sure that we can we can bring as much, um, as many people to as many different shows as possible to support these folks. Sure. Because to be a musician is such a challenge. Yeah. There's there's such it's a it's a lifestyle that is so different from those of us monkeys that just do our nine to fives and and, and do our stuff, but. You appreciate it because, really, what song do you have playing in your head? That's the question. If you've got a song playing in your head at any given moment, it's because you have an appreciation for music. And if you appreciate the music, these guys need your support. And that's the, that's the bottom line of what we're trying to do with this podcast, is to bring light to those with talent and, and say, you know, hey, if you like these guys, come support them. If you don't like them, don't support them. But we'd love for you to come down and see. Sure. That's the reason for this podcast. Yeah. Bring together uh, the people of Detroit and get them to listen to uh, the local bands and support them and get them out there and, and support their uh, their craft and, and their art and, and um, you know, help them make some money and, and get successful, you know. It, and really, it, all it is, is is everybody's got a story to tell. Some people have a story to tell in a book. Some people have a story to tell in music. And sometimes that musical story is phenomenal. For sure. And if, if you love that story, then just come see some people. Eric, I think this is about the time we start wrapping it up. Yeah, we're about 30 minutes in, and uh, this is our, our wrap on our first podcast. 
Uh, we're getting it out there and letting you guys know what we're going to be doing here in the future. And uh, we There's look forward to you guys listening yeah. to us on the next one. There's going to be so much more good stuff. And we really hope that you, you enjoy our show and come see some other bands. It's not about us. It's all about the bands. Come see the bands. Exactly. On our next pod show, we're going to have uh, some more dates for you guys to come down to the Hamtramck Music Festival. Happens in March. Um, hopefully, we'll have some good weather. Regardless, you got to come out and see us anyways. Oh, yeah. Um, we'll be at the ticket booth uh, volunteering our time and supporting the bands. And, um, and even before then, we're going to do some, a bunch of shows interviewing a lot of the bands that are going to be part of the show. Yep, we're going to try to get in front of their face and interview them and find out what uh, what makes them tick and what um, inspires them and, and not only uh, that, kind of brings, what brings the bands to you. What type of music are they going to play and is this the kind of band you want to come see? Sure. There's going to be hundreds of bands to choose from and we want to go through as many as possible and give you guys the options. Let's put a wrap on this, Bill. Bill, you're Bill. And you must be Eric. That's us. Unguarded right. moments. Thank Talk you to you guys next time. By. See ya. Bye. All right. Good night.